there are a lot of theories out there, but what's distinctive about root narrative theory is that it, it's an attempt to explain the origin with, of political ideas and how people make sense of conflict itself. So we have categories like conservative and liberal, political left, political right, moderate and radical and extremist, and we don't really know what those mean. We apply them idiosyncratically. What root narrative theory does is it gives us a tangible and concrete way to identify where, what those arguments are, what those narratives are, and they emerge from the, the conception or perception of abusive power. And so the, there are different forms of root narrative theory. Each one corresponds to a different kind of abusive power. There's what I'll call the security narrative, which is about protecting the people. There's a liberty narrative, which is about protecting individuals from government. And then there's an equality narrative, which is about protecting the people from abusive elites. And then a dignity narrative, which is about protecting marginalized outgroups from discrimination uh, and oppression in general. So these four broad root narratives are ways of making sense of a whole array of um, diverse political arguments that we can find in conflict data. There's no specific methodology that you need to use for root narrative theory. You could use it in quantitative survey work. You could use it in ethnography to sensitize your concepts you're, you're playing with, or uh, you can use it in, in the analysis of text. And I think that's one of the easiest and most direct uses, whether it's in, in speeches or newspaper clips or tweets, all the way to policy documents and scientific, social scientific arguments. You can use it to classify those texts and the ideas that are being used there and therefore the worldview or ideology that the author is bringing to bear in the development of that text. The theory can be used in so many different ways, but especially when you've got what I'll call radical disagreement, where you've got, say, an authoritarian versus a human rights or liberty argument. Um, and in that case, you might you make sense of this, this situation by understanding that the authoritarian isn't, uh, it doesn't support authority for its own sake, but supports what we might call instead security, a deeper value. So it helps us to understand the moral argument that people make against rival claims. One of my favorite examples is making sense of uh, the Bernie Sanders campaign in the United States. So why is it that Bernie Sanders, who might be so supportive of, say, the material interests of the African-American community, is at the same time so unpopular with that broad group? And it has to do with a shift in the narrative. So if it's a shift from a dignity narrative that is protecting marginalized outgroups to an equality narrative, which is more of an economic argument. And that shift in argument can be seen as a threat to the interests and future of the group. And I think that's one of the reasons why Bernie Sanders has had such trouble getting traction in that area. Root narrative theory grew out of my dissertation work, my original interest in political competition, and then was applied here at the School for Conflict Analysis and Resolution to conditions of radical disagreement in conflicts where students were trying to make sense of conflicts around the world. And I applied it in a book, it was about Meet the Press, and made sense of the development of American political culture there. But we started to work it in the classroom and build directly out of what the students were working on and it developed into what I now call the root narrative theory. It was really the best use of the classroom and thinking and applying what we're doing in the classroom to research that generated the idea. So it's really a, a nice product in that way.